Today we're going to be covering the magic of your timber frame structure and that component is the timber frame knee brace. Now braces in your frame work in compression so they have loads pushing against them and the whole idea of a brace is to keep your frame from racking. Uh, some people call it wind bracing, I call them knee braces. So a few rules when you're doing braces, pick the best stock you have. You want the, the straightest grains you have, things like that. You don't want a bunch of big knots. They need to be strong. They need to be able to withstand heavy loads pushing against them. Uh, there's going to be a lot of forces on them, especially if you're like me and you built a big building in the middle of a wind tunnel. And you want to make sure that thing's not going to move. Now, how long you make your braces, it's all going to depend on the spans that you're dealing with that you want to keep from racking. Other rule of braces, you put them in opposing. So if you have one like this, you get another one like that. And that, that kind of completes the square. So the braces in modern stick framing, we're used to putting sheathing on everything. In a modern stick built house, your plywood, OSB, zip seal system, whatever it is you're using, that gives the rigidity to the frame itself, to the stick frame. That's what keeps everything from racking and moving. Timber frames rely on nothing more than the structure itself to resist those loads. You could leave a timber frame as long as you had it anchored well and you did everything right. You could build a timber frame with nothing but a roof on it, wide open walls, no sheathing, no nothing. Not that I do it, but you can. You look at timber frame gazebos and things like that. It's pretty much what they are. But um, it's that bracing that does it. That bracing is just, it's key. It's one of the most important elements of your timber frame. And it's also one of the easiest ones to confuse yourself on and make it extremely hard for you to lay it out. We've done a few layout videos in the past, but like I said before, my camera equipment wasn't quite good enough to really tell the story properly. So we're revisiting those and I can show you a little bit easier. So anyway, stay tuned. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the other side of it. Well, hopefully you guys can see this okay. But on your framing squares, which when we go to cover the basic tools, um, which we have done before also, but we're going to do it again. Again, I digress. So on your framing squares, if you're going to build a timber frame, you want a framing square. It'll do all the layout that you need it to do. You can lay, I laid out this entire timber frame with nothing but a framing square and a tape measure. So it's definitely doable. But when you go to buy one of these, you want to buy the framing squares that have all the tables on them. There's rafter tables, there's all kinds of good stuff on here. But on the tongue of the framing square, the skinny part of the framing square, you know, it might be hard to see the color of this and the lighting, but so right here. So here you see the number 27 and 27. So that would be your brace layout. If you're going to lay braces out 27 inches from the post and 27 inches from the beam, that would be right there. So we're doing a 24 by 24 layout and I will show that when we go to lay it out. But the number next to that on your framing squares, next to the 24 and the 24, is a number 33 and then a 94 up above it. So that 33 is 33 inches and that would be 0.9416. So this works out to be, uh, you multiply 16 by 0.94 and that works out to be 15.04 on this. So I'm going to measure these braces, the length of them, and I'll show you from where to where, is going to be 33 and 15 sixteenths. That 0 0.04 is not going to do you any harm in your frame. But that's where you get that measurement from. That is an easy reference place to find those measurements. Completely simplifies the whole process for you. Okay, so we need this brace length to be 33 and 15 sixteenths. And what I'm going to do... I don't want to trim this board to 33 and 15 sixteenths because then we have no room for the tenon at all. We need to make sure we have room for the tenon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold myself off a little bit. Now there again when you're going to cut these this is not the best example of the best material for a brace. I just rough cut 2 by 4 I planed it down so we could see the marks easily. But um, Let's go right from the beginning here. So I want 33 and 15 sixteenths. 
So I'm going to tip my tape measure down and I'm just going to put a mark at the 10 inch mark. Then I'm going to go down to 43 and 15 sixteenths. Double check, make sure you're on your line. The sixteenths of an inch over the course of a whole frame can start getting you out of square pretty quick. So 43 and 15 sixteenths. So that measurement, if I double check it, Give me 33 and 15 sixteenths. So here was one of the most one of the most asked questions in the course of building this timber frame that we're in was how do I determine the housing and things like that? I do everything with my braces and a half inch housing. A couple reasons for that. It gives you a little more bearing surface for that compression load. Plus, it's actually a lot easier to hide mistakes if you've made some little ones with housings. It makes everything look a lot cleaner. So to get that housing, to get that so it is exactly a half inch deep when you go to cut these, I'm going to measure up three eighths of an inch from the edge. So right there at that point, that would be the end of my brace. So now we want to make the first line of our brace. Now you're going to do the same thing with your braces that you do with your timbers. You're going to pick out reference faces, you're going to pick out adjacent faces, you're going to do all that good stuff. I did not worry about it as much here. So now we have that mark, we have to go this way and this is what we're going to lay our tenon out. So this is going to be junk here, and this is going to be waste here. So now I want a 3 inch tenon. And that's going to be way straight there. So when we come down to the other end of our brace stock, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up 3 8 from the edge. We're going to do the whole, the whole thing over again. Again, if you can get rid of knots, things like that in this process, do the best you can. A lot of times it depends on what kind of material you have to work with. Again, flip the your speed square. I want to measure up my three inches for my for my tenon. Now for this demonstration piece I do not need three inches, but we have it anyway. Again we're going to X out all our waste. And then we're going to cut it. Well, I didn't hit record on the first cut. I'm glad I caught it on this one because otherwise I've got to do the whole damn video all over again. So what I'm cutting these, I'll cut this way first and then I'll cut that way. That way I have enough bearing, good bearing surface for the saw. Now I'm left-handed, so cutting right-handed is always a pain for me. And I always do better left-handed. This I'll cut right to the line.
and then cut across this way. Alright, so this part right here is what's going to rest inside the housing. We still have to cut out the cheek of our tenon and all that. But I wanted to show you guys, when you measure up that 3 eighths from the edge, that leaves you with a perfect half inch. If I could quit shaking, too much damn coffee. So it's a perfect half inch right there from this point to that guy right there. And same thing on the other side. That's why you do the 3 eighths and our total brace length does not include these tenons. It goes from this point to the other to the mirror point on the other side. That is our 33 and 15 sixteenths. So there's a few ways you can cut these tenons off. Um, you can curve it with a saw, clean it up with a chisel or your slick. You can, um, you can cut them on a table saw, hold them on then, cut them through there. I've done that before. Works very well as long as you can hold it nice and square to the actual table saw. But what we're going to do, because it's only three quarter inches deep, we're going to hit it with a router. We're going to leave a little bit of the line so that we have something to trim to. No, let's see. So we have something to trim to when we go to finish this off. Now, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you've seen me cut, cut tenons like this for a long time. Really helps to clamp that workpiece down really well. Now I'm not worried about my clamp marks in this because this is just demonstration pieces. But I want it nice and tight on there. I don't want that thing moving on me. I already have the depth of our router bit set. So I'm just going to ease off and just kind of ease into it and go slow. We're going to leave line that we can clean up with the chisel. And uh, we're going to get after it. Love the smell of pine. So much better than smelling like blacksmith shop when you go in the house. Wife does not find blacksmith shop very sexy. I do, but I'm just weird like that, I suppose. Okay, we're almost done with this brace. Now, once you get good at these, you can rip these off so fast. Uh, especially if you're in production mode. We have a ton of them laid out. You can make a template. Templates work just fine for stuff like this if you have to cut a lot of them. I recommend it. Personally, I don't do a ton of templates. I really should. It'd probably save me a lot of time, but I've just been, I always like to lay stuff out myself. Now, when you're, when you're laying out your tenons on these braces, it is not a bad idea. And sometimes I fall into some bad habits hurrying a little bit. It's not a bad idea to lay out the entire thing, even on the edge of it, all the way around. It's much easier it's kind of nice if you could see your lines all the way around, then you could pair the lines where you need to. Like I said, this is only an inch and a half thick. I could do it with the power tools easy enough, but it definitely does help, especially the bigger the piece goes, it helps a lot. So I recommend when you're chiseling down this stuff, don't just just don't go whole hog all the way into the bottom. Work it, work it down your line in small bits. 
Try not to let your chisel fall out of there. As you're hacking across this end grain, and it's much easier to go down square if you're just taking a little at a time. And just work it back as you go. Now keep in mind, I mentioned it before in other videos, when you're chiseling against your bevel, it's going to want to drive it in. So sometimes you may want to hold your chisel like this depending on what you're doing. For this I want to go straight down as I can. It's a lot easier for me to watch that line if I'm holding my chisel straight up and down. And there's a fine line between how much meat to leave on here and how much to take off. If you go too thick with that, it's going to be a bitch to chisel that out. If you go too thin, the chisel's not going to want to set right for you. Now try not to go too deep into the cheek of the tenon. Because sometimes you may cut a weak spot when you sever that grain across like that. So once you get to a certain point, I'll go bevel up or bevel down. Of course it helps if you uh, clamp the hell out of your piece, better than I am. As I send the chisel into my leg, right? Now, if you keep on sharpening your chisels properly, for little joints like this, it's a dandy little square for quick reference to make sure that you went and that's pretty damn good for an eyeball. It's actually right on the money. And you can just clean it up. A router is definitely a tool that you want to keep for doing your frame. It makes everything so much easier. Oh, there's our timber frame brace. Now this is a tiny brace, very thin. This is not the kind of brace you'd be putting in your structure. Generally, if I'm doing a white pine brace, I go a minimum four by six on them, and I like to make sure they're nice and clear. Uh, definitely want to make sure they're clear, because if you've got a bunch of knots in them, things like that, it's going to weaken the structure. You do not, you just don't want to weaken the structure. A lot of timber framers will use hardwood braces, even when they're building a pine frame. Nothing wrong with that. It gives you a nice strong brace and uh, could be on the next one. I may do the same thing, especially being, uh, well, never mind. I can't give too, too much away yet. But just like everything else, when we do these, you want to chamfer these edges a little bit so that when you're lining it up to go into the mortise, the brace mortise, it'll kind of line itself up. If you go nice, square, beautiful edges in there, what will happen is they'll catch the edges, you'll be splitting wood off, you'll be cursing, you'll be screaming, you'll be kicking the dog, and it's just no good. But uh, from the amount of questions over the last few years I've had on timber frame braces, it seems to be one of the things that baffles people the most, and it's not, and it's not that people aren't intelligent enough to figure it out. It's more just doing a couple of them until you get your mind kind of into that practice mode where your mind can just look at it and see exactly how it's got to work. Now uh, this brace right here, like I said, this will fit a 24 inch by 24 inch layout. Um, so what we're concerned with, that 33 and 15 sixteenths that we talked about, is from that point where it bottoms out in the housing to that point where it bottoms out in the housing. And that will become a lot clearer on the next video when we actually do a couple of brace mortises and we get this thing put in. And those will cut by hand. We'll do it with the bitten brace. 
or brace and bit, however you want to say it, so you guys can kind of see how that works. Because um, you can go to a lot of antique shops, a lot of yard sales, and still pick those up really, really cheaply. If you're on a super tight budget to do your project, you know, you've got to save money wherever you can. Um, so, anyway, I hope that cleared the brace layout up for some of you. If anybody has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can go to the website tradesmanoffgrid.com if you prefer to drop a private email with your questions. I'll do what I can what I can for you, not what I can't, I'll do what I can. Um, I can tell you, uh, there's freaking cats fighting outside, that's cool. I can tell you that uh, it is harder for me to get to the comments than it used to be. Uh, a lot of times while I'm at work watching a piece of equipment around, I'll answer the comments, but a lot of times now I'm training new guys, apprentices and whatnot, so it's a little different to, uh, I can't just whip the phone out and set a terrible example. I mean, plenty of that happens, believe you me, but kind of try to, uh, so that's why the comment answering gets a little bit slower and there's a lot more of them than there used to be. So anyway, have a good night, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time out, we will do the brace mortises and housings. And we'll put them in, and then after that, we'll cover pegging, making pegs, draw boring, all that good stuff. Hopefully by the end of this series, you guys will have a good grasp on the basics of what it takes to build one of these. Hopefully we can simplify some of the things. So, have a good one everybody. I'll see you on the next one.